duties. You know, we've been going through the Bible, or the Old Testament, a lot, and I've had a few people ask me about the New Testament. In particular, one of the questions is, what was Jesus' real name? Was it Jesus? Well, Jesus is a Greek word. And in the Bible, of course, it said that his name will be Emmanuel. Well, Emmanuel is a Latin word. Now, these words all have basically the same meaning. What they mean is the new man, the new person. They have different connotations about, about it, and uh, a lot of, of confusion is, is about that man Jesus. First place, he was Jewish. He was born to Jewish parents. Now, when they used a name uh, similar to Jesus, it could have been Yeshua. And then it would have been Ben Yosef, or Ben Joseph, meaning Jesus, the son of Joseph. So the Greek word Jesus was kind of a playoff of the Hebrew word. Then we come to Mary. Now, Miriam was the name. Miriam is a Jewish name not Mary. Later on, they shortened it to Mary so you get a better idea. Another thing about Jesus, people talk about how he selected his disciples. Now, there's a little bit of confusion about the 12. There were 12 chosen disciples. And that basically is what I want to talk about today, is how all that came about. First of all, you got to realize there are 12 tribes of Israel. It's talked about all the way through the Old Testament, all the way through the New Testament. They mention in various times the 12 tribes of Israel and one lost tribe. Well, no one ever names the lost tribe. No one ever talks about it. I believe the lost tribe was the original tribe which contained the 12 tribes. So what Jesus did, and this is documented through the Bible, when you read it, you'll understand how this all came about. When he started his ministry, now remember he was in his 30s when he started his ministry. And the reason for that was, like any good Jewish boy, he stayed home and took care of his brothers and sisters until they were old enough to take care of themselves. And then he left home to start his ministry. When he started it, it was his plan to select disciples from each of the 12 tribes. Now, some of the historians have said he had 72 disciples and 12 chosen. There's where the difference came. Other historians said no. He had 60 disciples. Both of them are right. Because if you take the 12 chosen out of the 72, that leaves 60 disciples and 12 chosen. So he chose six from each tribe. He allowed six from each tribe to come in to learn and be taught the mysteries that he wanted spread throughout the world. At that time, the world was pretty limited. The Roman Empire, the Greeks, uh, the, the Eastern, the Far East, and that was the way that he had planned on covering his world. And it was important. They had no TV, no radio. So how was Jesus going to get all that word out? He knew that he couldn't do it all alone. Another thing, they, they said Jesus, Jesus came to establish world peace. Well, when Jesus came and he started his ministry, he said, I came not to change the law, but to fulfill it. One statement. Another statement was, I did not bring peace, I brought a sword. I'm here with the sword to cut through all the garbage, to get back to the law. And so when he same, said he came to fulfill the law, the Christians now have decided that meant that he was the Messiah. That meant that as he was uh, 
predicted, and it was predicted in the Old Testament that the Messiah would come and change everything. Of course, he was supposed to come as a conquering hero, and, and the people would bow down and follow him, and there would never be all the trouble that there was with Jesus. But that's not what Jesus said. Jesus said, I come with the sword. They're not going to like me. They're not going to love what I have to say because I'm going to tell the truth. And usually religion and politics, they're designed for the people in power. They're designed to continue that power and to continue uh, the rule of the people one way or the other. Well, Jesus wanted to change that. He wanted to get back to the original teaching from the origin of time when it was only love and God was a uh, being that was supreme and universal. And so he came into another, another thing I just thought about at the birth of Jesus. Every now and then people talk about the three wise men. Don't know where they got the three wise men because nowhere in the Bible, not the New Testament or the Old Testament, nowhere does it say three wise men. You see, the truth of the matter is that it says wise men, but it does mention the three gifts, frankincense, myrrh, gold. The things like that were mentioned because those were the three main gifts that were important at that time. Frankincense was used more for healing. Myrrh was used for healing. These are important things to remember, that they were meaningful gifts but wise men, how many? Could have been one, could have been more. We don't know that for sure, but we do know that the wise men did visit, and we do know that they didn't come from the Mideast. They came from the Far East. That means they came from like China, Thailand, uh, Korea, the different areas that were Far East. They came. We covered a few weeks ago, we covered about the, the star of Bethlehem and what it could have been. I've only got 10 minutes to talk to you when we talk like this. So i got to be a little concise in these things. I don't want to repeat too much, but I want to repeat enough so that you get the general idea of the meanings behind all these things, so that you get a better idea of what all this study is about. I think Christianity is wonderful. Any religion that teaches peace and love is wonderful. And that's the important thing because that's what Jesus taught, peace and love. Now let's go back to those disciples. So he had 12 chosen disciples. Each one had a specific relationship with one of the tribes that were listed. So he was giving the innermost secrets to the chosen 12. My friends, that's the important thing to remember. And greater mysteries than these and greater secrets than these are we going to reveal as the weeks go on. And until then, I just want to say God bless you and thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. Bye.